Hello and welcome to another PC Games and Hardware Guide. I'm Dave. And I'm Jacob. So right, if your graphics card is struggling to keep up with the latest titles, you may think your only options are to either drop down your graphical fidelity to be on par with, say, a 90s 3D platformer, or to buy a brand new graphics card. Well, there is still a way to squeeze a little more performance out of your current card before you're forced to break open your piggy bank and count those precious pennies. Overclocking. Yeah, and it's easy to do nowadays too. There's no 2B pencil required, so let's get straight to it, shall we? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go. There are oodles of potential graphics card overclocking tools out in the wild, and almost every manufacturer has their own take on the Revatuna Statistics backend software. For this video, however, we are going to use MSI's Afterburner, our personal app of choice, and coincidentally, our sponsor's very own app too. Yeah, complete coincidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But don't worry about matching your brand of car to your overclocking or monitoring software. If you prefer the look of another, most software works with any and all manufacturer's cards, regardless of who put it together or put it up on the internet. It's just a case of personal preference and old habits, really. If you are running one of AMD's 400 series, 500 series, or RX Vega series cards, you could also use the Walkman software AMD have included in their driver package. For the most part, the instructions within this video will apply to this software also, although the way you go about implementing these changes may differ slightly. You will also need to sort out your choices of benchmarking runs, which should be fairly easy enough even if you own a very small collection of the latest games in Steam. Plenty of games have a benchmarking utility built into them, and we like to use titles such as Civilization VI, Deus Ex, Total War, Hitman, Tomb Raider, and Shadow of War, just to name a few. GTA V is also a good pick if you've got it, most people have. While these gaming benchmarks are great to see the delta between the before and after scores, they aren't too great when it comes to tweaking your settings on the fly. To fulfill this purpose, you need to pick up the free Unigen Heaven benchmark, which will be able to run continuously in the background as you mess with your settings. Yeah, it's really pretty too. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get some initial numbers then. If you ever want to know the difference your overclock has made to your actual performance, you'll need to grab some numbers for your pre-overclock system for comparison. So grab one of your preferred games from earlier and then run the test. You can usually find a run benchmark optional similar within the graphical settings. So make note of those graphical settings that you're using, making sure to turn off any frame rate limits or vsync along the way. You want to aim to keep all other variables to the absolute minimum so you know exactly where your overclock has netted you in performance. Now sadly, benchmarking isn't a thrilling process, so grab your fidget spinner and be prepared to wait around for some time. Now I need to know. Oh, it's oh. so close. Oh, it's nearly, I nearly had it. Yay! Hey. <laughs> Once the benchmark is finished, note down the minimum and average frame rates. It's also worth running another benchmark, be it 3D Mark Firestrike or a game just for a comparative score too. With the relatively cautious overclocking we're carrying out today, you're unlikely to do any real damage to your components, but you still need to be patient to get the best results. Small increments are the name of the game, so don't go wild with the sliders, okay? Anyways, with that advice out of the way, let's get to overclocking. Start up Afterburner and make sure the Windows logo isn't lit up. Clicking this applies the settings within the app to your graphics cards the moment your system boots, and you only want that once you have a steady and stable overclock. Next up, boot up Heaven in a window. You want to allow enough screen space around it to keep tweaking the clocks within Afterburner as the benchmark runs. On a native 1080p screen, run Heaven at 720, any resolution above that, and you can run it at 1080p. Now you can actually start bumping clock speeds. We're going to start with the memory clock. This will help your memory shift more data at any given time, but bear in mind you are still limited by your memory bus width for bandwidth. So start increasing the memory slider to the right in around 5 to 10 MHz increments, making sure to hit the tick button to lock in the clock increase along the way. So after each increase, pay close attention to the Heaven benchmark for any visual artifacting. So memory artifacts will appear as either solid blocks or blobs of colour or pin sharp stars. Keep pushing the slider up until you see these artifacts or until everything goes black. Once you hit this barrier, dial your memory overclock back a few notches along the slider and apply the new memory clock. Let Heaven run through a couple of loops and keep checking for artifacts. If you get any, dial it back a little further again. So once you're at a point where you don't see any artifacts and all seem stable, make a note of your memory overclock somewhere safe. Then you can reset all your settings back to the default. You will apply this again later once you've got your GPU overclock in place and stable. 
The GPU overclock is where the real performance boost will come from, but it's also going to increase the heat output of your graphics card. You don't want to whack these settings up so far that heat actually causes thermal throttling and worsens gaming performance under load. It's also worth noting if you're using an NVIDIA card, the GPU Boost 3.0 tech will still increase the GPU frequency if it has the headroom. Think your overclock is an offset to the base clock speed. It's going to be added onto the usual peak frequency that your graphics card will reach under load, thanks to GPU Boost. Before you start increasing the GPU clock speed slider, increase the power delivery to your card if possible. Also, you might want to find it best to increase the temperature limit slightly to allow for a little more thermal headroom. Following the same process as the memory overclock, increase your GPU clock speed by a small 5 to 10 MHz increments. When you're overclocking the GPU, you want to be a little bit more patient. After every small increment boost, make sure to take your time checking the benchmark for any artifacts as you go. Artifacts for the GPU will appear a little differently to those we saw with memory. They could manifest as pixel sized dots, random shards of color, or full screen flashes of color. Once you see these artifacts, it's best to drop a few increments and retest until you find a stable value. You may not see any artifacts, however, and the system might just crash. Don't be too concerned here, because you, when you restart again, everything will be set back to normal and you can just start afresh. So now you've found a stable offset for both memory and GPU, you need to apply both at the same time. You will likely find you experience some artifacts that weren't present when you ran both overclocks independently. Fear not, just try and classify the artifacts as either originating from the GPU or memory offset and drop the clock speed slightly until they go away. If you see a complete system crash or freeze, then simply restart, set your overclock slightly below the initial values and go through the process from there. Once you feel the artifacts have all been taken care of and you no longer see any strange occurrences, now you can start stress testing. Now it's time to see if that overclock can handle something a little more graphically intensive, a bit more representative of modern day gaming. For starters, close down heaven and reopen it in full res native resolution glory. Oh. If all is stable, then hit F9 to benchmark and compare the results with your pre-overclock numbers. If it's not stable, then go back to Afterburner and drop the settings a few more steps. Go back through the remaining benchmark runs and see how much your overclock has netted you overall. Once you are happy, click the Windows logo on Afterburner so that these settings will load up whenever your PC boots. Sometimes your overclock may not make as much difference in game as you might have hoped. Unfortunately, the manufacturing process doesn't guarantee that every graphics card is going to be created equal, and some will take to overclocking a little better than others, in what is colloquially known as the silicon lottery. You can always try and improve airflow to your GPU to combat some of the heat, and allow your GPU to keep clock speeds consistently higher if you are struggling with stuttering or poor performance under load in game. And that's all there is to it! It's pretty easy to boost your graphics card performance, and it's something that most GPUs now are capable of as opposed to the limitations placed on some processors. So if you've enjoyed the video and feel confident in your overclocking abilities, then give us the like and subscribe. Also check out our website, pcgamesend.com, for the latest in the worlds of hardware and gaming. Cool, thanks for watching. Bye.